Perfect. So I have a So you can write it down. Um, there are also options if you have like capsules. Um, and the element, fire or flood. Clusters, cotton, your assets will start with any. So it's now crop. Now it's a split. Device is right. Device is all set up. We can dashboard. Now we can see there we have options for install app or go to. As mentioned, you can seconds. Settings, lock device, battery, device name, Bluetooth, power off. Of course, Bluetooth. X. I can use. Going to go ahead and exit control center and get you all set up with Ledger Live. All right, so from here, we are going to go ahead and get started. We are using Channel X. And so if we hadn't just gone through the setup, we could say it's the first time using your Nano X and it will just walk you through those steps that I just walked you through. However, because we've already set it up and we have our recovery phrase written down, you're going to go ahead and select the connect your Nano X. This is going to take it through a genuine check, which is really a great feature. It confirms that the uh, firmware on your device is authentic. Uh, and when anytime you go to the My Ledger tab in Ledger Live, it will also confirm the genuine on there as well to confirm that it's authentic. So check my Nano. And from there, it's going to have me allow Ledger Manager on my device, giving it approval to interact. And then this is all good. Your Ledger Nano X is genuine and ready to use Ledger Live. And then this is where we get to go ahead and set it up. So Ledger Live is a really cool interface that allows you to read uh, what lives on the blockchain and interact with it. So we can go ahead and add an account. And this is gonna be the first step. The first step is going to be adding your accounts and adding the applications onto your device. So from the My Ledger tab, we can add the applications on our device. You can see that there are a few of the common applications. Go ahead and install. Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this is also, so you can see at the top, it says your device is genuine. As mentioned, anytime you are in this page, it will confirm the authenticity of your firmware. We'll also have your device name and it will tell you if your firmware is up to date. Please note that if your Ledger Live is not up to date, it might not note if the firmware is not up to date. So you always wanna make sure your Ledger Live is up to date. All right, so as this, Falling. Go ahead and fall. My apologies. All right, there we go. So we are good to go. So we're going to put a portfolio. So now that we have added those applications onto the device, we have Ethereum and Bitcoin portfolio. Add the accounts. So I'm going to add Bitcoin. I'm going to prompt me to open the Bitcoin app on my device. I will press both. Ready. And at the moment, it is synchronizing. So it's going to look for the accounts on the blockchain and let us add them. Perfect. So you can see now that we've added one account, this account tab will open up to us now that we actually have accounts to. So from here, we can go ahead and say add our second Ethereum account. Let's go ahead and do that. First Ethereum. It's going to prompt me. 
up. Like when you update the app, so it's your tab. Perfect. So you can see when there are updates, it's going to be able to prompt you up here to update them. Which is great that you don't have to go looking for it. It tells you it right at the top. And it looks like since the device we have been set up in a minute, it has an outdated firmware, but we can update the firmware from up here, which we always want to. And we'll take you to that as soon as we're updated. Feel free to drop any questions you have in the comments and we will. It'll also go ahead and tell you up here your capacity. So this is how many applications you can install onto the device. Please keep in mind that uninstalling and reinstalling applications has no impact on your funds as they live on the blockchain and not in the ledger device. Um, so this means that if you did to if uninstall to make room for another app, you can totally do so and then just put the app back on as it's needed. You can see that they're all updated. Go ahead and go back to accounts. I'm going to go ahead and update the firmware with y'all. That is a great thing to do anytime it is there. All right, so firmware update. I'm going to make sure that you have a copy of your recovery phrase in a secure location. We're going to go ahead and check that. That is because occasionally in firmware updates, the device may reset itself. And in that case, we would just use the restore from recovery phrase feature to get it set up back up. Uh, so we're going to confirm that we have it. Then it's going to go ahead and download the update. And this usually only takes a minute or two. Okay, cool. Processing. So you can see here, there's the app catalog. These have a bunch of different apps you can look through if you're interested in them. Um, and then you can, the next tab over, it's kind of blocked here, but you have your apps installed. So the ones that are already installed. Okay, perfect. So the firmware now is up to date. I'm going to go ahead and confirm the update on my device. Uploading. Perfect. All right, and then I can go ahead and unlock the device. A cool feature when you unlock the pin is that it will actually start on a different number each time. That way, if you are like sitting next to someone, they can't count how many clicks it takes for you to get to the numbers. Um, it's just an extra security feature. All right, so we have updated the firmware. Close that. And you can see since we updated the firmware, uninstalled those applications, that can sometimes happen, which is no big deal at all. As I mentioned, it has no impact on your funds. So we're going to go ahead and just we install Ethereum for the sake of demonstration. Okay, perfect. So we can now go to the account tab and we can go ahead and add our Ethereum to ask us to open it on our device, press both buttons to do so, and the play application is ready. Synchronizing up to the blockchain so it can bounce. Beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and add our first account. You can add more than one account. Just keep in mind that the first one will need to be funded a bit before you can add the second account. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a cool feature of Ledger Live. So of course you have your portfolio. There are no assets in here at the moment. Um, 
the any of the accounts on the blockchain. So it's showing up as nothing at the moment. Um, you can go to the market and here you will see um, a typical market portfolio where you have the market cap, uh, the change, and you can um, sort it between the range of 24 hours, seven days, etc. The Discover tab is really cool. This has, um, these have many uh, applications that you can use with your ledger device, such as Paraswap, Uniswap, um, MoonPay for um, one inch. I'm sorry, I misspoke. I meant one inch in Paraswap. So there are a lot of options on here, uh, which is kind of cool to take a look into. Of course, we have our POAP app on here. If you ever want to do POAPs, which is always fun. There. All right. So then the send tab is, of course, where you're going to send your assets. So this will be a, the account to debit. And then you can enter the recipient address in there. And then it will have you um, confirm the transaction on the device. The receive tab. This is where you will generate your wallet address to send the funds to. So say if I want to do Ethereum, it gives me the little notice. Please only send Ether Ethereum tokens to Ethereum accounts. So we're going to continue. And then this is really cool because it allows you to approve it on your device uh, to verify the address. And this helps prevent different um, things like clipboard hijacks, uh, et cetera, just making sure you're able to confirm your recovery phrase as such. So it says verify address. I'm going to go ahead and look. I can see that all of the numbers there are the same ones there. I'm going to go ahead and scroll right to approve. I could go right one more time to reject. but In this case, I'm going to approve it. Um, and then done. So I have then copied that address and I can then send it, uh, use it to paste into wherever I'm sending the funds from to get them here. So the buy sell, of course, you can buy and sell your crypto. At the moment, you can only sell a BT in Ledger Live. However, there are options to swap into um, and other such. This is the swap tab where you the exchange and then your history very cool because it allows you to um use the exchange app and then swap your funds right from here and then the my ledger tab which of course as we have seen allows you to install apps manage your apps manage your firmware and check your capacity then i'm going to go ahead and go over to the settings and we can see here the preferred currency. So if we wanted to change this from US dollar to something else, we totally could. This is true for the display language as well. And the region. Perfect. So this is if you want to set up a password lock. So keep in mind that when you log into Ledger Live or you open Ledger Live, there's no um, login page. I mean, you don't need to put a password in. This is because, as mentioned, no funds actually live in Ledger Live, but on the blockchain, Ledger Live is just a tool to help you visualize what lives there. So in the case of wanting to put a password lock, you are more than welcome to if you don't want anyone to be able to open it and see it on your computer. This will allow you to choose your password um, and log in. Perfect. And so then we're going to go ahead and go accounts. This will allow you to export your accounts. Say if you wanted to download Ledger Live on your phone, um, you can export the accounts that way. Help is a great tab because it has the clear cache. So much of the time, um, things that we see in Ledger Live not being fully synchronized or balance appearing kind of off, clearing the cache will do a quick resync of the blockchain and usually get the uh, Ledger Live sunk back up and everything showing correctly. Perfect. So you can look through the other features, experimental features um, that you can all look around. Yeah, this is kind of a basic walkthrough on how to use Ledger Live from your portfolio, your accounts, um, and then adding your applications. So I think the most important thing to always remember is that your Ledger's job is to generate your recovery phrase offline and then use encryption technology to keep it offline and then add another layer of security by allowing you to approve the transactions. Our job then as users is to make sure it stays offline by never entering it into a computer, always keeping it um, offline and in a secure location where no one else can get it because it really is the key to your funds. Um, and we have many great Help Center articles as well as Ledger Academy, which really help break down some of the more complex topics um, and help you to dive deeper in some of those understandings. And I definitely recommend checking out Ledger Academy. So this will sum up the tutorial for today. I hope you all enjoyed. 
and take care. And I can go ahead and answer questions. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and answer questions. So let's see what we've got. Perfect. All right, we're going to go ahead and dual answer some questions here. All right, cool. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm here, too. <laughs> Uh, see, there's a lot of questions coming in, and um, so basically, it's a little, it's a little weird today. It's Taylor's first time, and we don't have things quite set up yet on her computer, so she would be fine. And I was kind of doing my best to go in there and answer questions, but as soon as she needed the mouse, and I couldn't really control, so, uh, so I apologize uh, for that weirdness, and also for the stream not starting right away. Uh, we did eventually get that, um, but Taylor is super efficient and expedient, so of course she went through the setup process super quick and efficiently. Um, so we have some time to answer your questions, and there's a lot of questions in there. Um, so scroll up and uh, go from where we left off. This is the fun part. This is the fun part. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Um, so Gil Smith, um, I think that was the last person before we uh, before I was not able to answer questions. You're asking, is there a cheaper version of the stacks coming? Um, so the stacks is the stacks, and it's it's the price that it is. Um, there may be other products that come out in the future. Um, I can't really speak to that. That really depends on people way way above our pay grade. We're just tech support uh, agents, so I can't really speak too much on that. Um, but um, you know, as long as Ledger continues to thrive and grow, then expect growth and expect new stuff. I've seen a few questions on here on battery issues. Those are uh, relatively common in the sense that they can be troubleshooted fairly easily. Um, you can go ahead when you have a battery issue. There are a couple different options. First and foremost, making sure the firmware on your device is up to date. Um, the latest version for a Nano X is 2.1.0. Um, you can check it, of course, by going to the My Ledger tab in Ledger Live or by going to the control center and checking it that way. Um, Oftentimes, just updating the firmware will help out. If that doesn't, then um, draining the battery entirely. Of course, make sure you have a copy of your recovery phrase in a secure location before doing so, just in case something funky happens and the device doesn't turn back on. Um, but draining it and then leaving it plugged into a wall charger overnight for like eight, sometimes 10 to 12 hours fixes it so much of the time. And then if it still doesn't, please reach out and we will get you taken care of. Even if uh, for an issue like that, even if it's out of warranty, we will still honor that and get you a replacement because uh, that's not expected behavior for the device and that's not the fault of. So if you are experiencing that, reach out. We'll, we'll, we'll get you to. All right. Unless the sound wasn't good. Sorry about that as well. We got our mic right here. I'm gonna that down a little bit further. Not blocking the view, but make sure you guys can hear us good. Oh, this is a good question from, uh, I'm, I'm going to butch butcher the name, Sirke, uh, asking, uh, when will we release an iPad version of Ledger Live? So um, the quick answer is I'm not too sure. Um, however, um, some users are able to um, download Ledger Live from the Apple App Store um, on an iPad and, and use it a little bit. It wasn't really designed for the iPad. And so when we say that, there isn't a version of Ledger Live available for the iPad that that is accurate and you may run into issues, but I've actually had some users report back like, hey, yeah, the, the app works OK on the iPad. It's a little glitchy because uh, it wasn't designed for it. Um, however, if you do try to like install Ledger Live from our official download page onto your iPad, probably not going to work at all. Um, so you can try that. But as for like releasing it, um, it would really depend on um, like kind of again, like not to like keep kicking the buck, you know, kicking the, the puck down the road, but um, uh, to, to another team. But like it's really up to them, uh, our developer team to determine like like um, which platform and which uh, which devices are going to support. Um, so I can't really speak too much on that or whether that's going to be a thing in the future. Um, however, if I will say as a blanket statement, um, we we will provide support to whatever has the most demand and the biggest user base. And so the platforms that Ledger Live is available for is just based on that. It's like this um, helping the most people um, uh, with, with this application, basically. Um, so if it grows, then potentially. I saw a question on there about some connection problems. Um, 
my thought there. So of course, we're help you're welcome to open a ticket and we are happy to help you out there um, more in depth. But you always want to make sure you're using the cable that came with the device or another data cable as the ledger requires a cable with data transfer capabilities and not just a charging cable. Additionally, it's really important to make sure there are no other third party wallets or dApps open in the background, even such as MetaMask, um, because if more than one application is trying to access your device, it can create interference. Um, and those are two things that very common will solve connection issues. However, if they don't, of course, please open up a ticket so we can assist you much more in depth. All right. Um, yeah, Hokey Scott, I think Kaylor already addressed your um, question about your battery issue that you're having. Uh, sorry, you're having that issue. Um, however, uh, yeah, reach out to us on support um, and we'll, we'll get you taken care of. And then we got Jay-Z Bun. Uh, you are saying that your Nano S is dead and you're trying to upgrade the S Plus. Um, that's okay. Awesome. Uh, you've raised a ticket and basically you're looking for a discount code, which is something that we offer, um, even if your Nano S is out of warranty. And if you're hoping to update, let's say your Nano S dies and it's out of warranty and you don't think you're going to get an upgrade or a free replacement, you might not because it's not under warranty, but reach out to us and we can get you a discount code to upgrade to the Nano S Plus, um, which is a sweet device. It's what I use. That's my, da uh, my, my daily user is the Nano S Plus. Um, so yeah, so reach out to us. Uh, let's see, you actually already did. Okay, so I'm going to write down your ticket number. So 12616. And uh, I'm gonna get that assigned to an agent and I'm gonna get an answer for you as soon as I get done with this stream. All right. Ooh, this is a good question. Do you wanna? Oh yeah, I'll happily tackle it. Yeah, so how do I recover XRP from Coinbase wallet using 12 word recovery phrase on Ledger? Is there a step-by-step -step guide? So I believe this is um, referring to the certain coins or tokens that Coinbase wallet no longer supports anymore. And if you have them attached to there, we're wanting to recover them. Um, they actually have some really great articles that I've seen on their end that have um, ways to do this. I would definitely recommend not importing your 12 word recovery phrase into your ledger device because as I mentioned um, while I was setting it up, the ledger's device, the, the job is to generate the recovery phrase offline. And so if we're putting a recovery phrase into it that was already exposed to the internet, it can't protect those private keys. Um, however, there are a bunch of other wallets that I know you can put that 12 word recovery phrase into to temporarily, temporarily rescue your funds, secure them, and then you can get a ledger, set it up as a new device and go ahead and send the funds to those accounts so that they're secure and in self custody and offline. Good answer. Uh, yeah, one wallet I would recommend is XRP toolkit. Um, if you're an XRP user, you probably know about XRP toolkit. Um, great XRP wallet. Um, you can get the web wallet um, right here in, right in your browser, and then you can, should be able to import your recovery phrase into that. Um, there may be a conflict with derivation path, depending on what derivation path Coinbase wallet used, um, and things may potentially get a little tricky. Uh, however, definitely try it and see, and see if it works. If it doesn't work, reach out to us and we'll, we'll help you troubleshoot that. We'll, we'll find a wallet that is able to do that, or we'll do our best to help you find a wallet that is able to do that. Ah, Pokey Scott. Yeah. Um, you're saying your ledger arrived damaged. Ugh, you can't get support. Ah, that stinks. Um, sorry to hear that. Um, okay, so it looks like it was loose in the box and then it arrived damaged. Okay, so for that, you definitely want to reach out to us. Um, we will uh, get your refund if you would like, um, as long as it's within 14 days um, from your initial purchase. So get get your get your ticket submitted as soon as possible, even if it takes a, a while for us to like actually answer. Okay, cool, definitely. Just making sure you're not the same person I wrote down that uh, that case number for uh, for that other ticket. So yeah, so get a support ticket opened up um, and uh, at a minimum, we'll get you a replacement free of charge. You won't have to pay for it um, if your device uh, arrived damaged. Um, we'll, we'll get you taken care of. If you do have, already have a support ticket, um, drop it in the comments and I'll write it down and we'll get to it as soon as I get done with this, uh, this stream. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Joseph, you, you you're you're talking about passphrases. This is a this is a kind of a fun topic. I love talking about passphrases. Um, so basically, uh, 
said you created a temporary passphrase account. Can you confirm that to access temporary passphrase account I created each time I need to go into control center, security, um, create passphrase. So yeah, so let, let me just finish reading your question real quick. Uh, each time to access the account I created. So no need to create pin and use the same pin as my normal pin to access. Do I need to set up a pin for temporary passphrase? Yeah, it's a really good question. The passphrase is kind of confusing. Uh, man, it looks like you have a lot going on here. <laughs> Let me skim through the rest of your stuff here to make sure I got all your questions or see if there's multiple questions. Okay, yeah, you're asking if it's good for security. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. You got a lot going on, Joseph. I will do my best to help you out here, though. Um, but you may actually benefit from um, more one on one direct support through a support ticket if uh, you have like a lot, a lot of questions, because um, our time is always so limited on live streams. Um, however, let me take a crack at it. Okay. So you've got your uh, you've got your two options when you're setting up a passphrase. You have um set as temporary or attached to pin if you set as temporary then it will allow you to put in whatever passphrase you want new or existing to access those accounts now uh, and then as soon as you power off your device it's going to forget that and it's, you're not you're no longer going to have access to it. you'd have to go through the settings and do that again now to have permanent access on your nano device to your passphrase accounts You'd want to attach it to pin and set up a different pin than your main one. So now your Nano will have two different pins. One pin will access your main accounts that are tied to your 24 word recovery phrase. The second pin will only access your passphrase accounts. And now while your 20, so your 25th word passphrase is, is um, built off of the 24 word recovery phrase. So it is dependent on it. If you were to import a different 24 word recovery phrase into your Nano and then try to set it up with the exact same passphrase, it's going to set up totally different accounts. So, um, so your, your 24 word recovery phrase is still the bread and, uh, bread and butter of your crypto accounts. And however, those accounts will not be able to access your passphrase accounts. They are completely separate and it would be impossible uh, for someone, let's say, if, uh, so to kind of like get into your next, uh, your next question is like, what, um, what's the best way to uh, have security for the uh, for this type of setup? And I think I, I am of the belief that the passphrase is um, the highest level of security that we offer um, currently um, with our devices, like right out of the box. And the reason I say that is because you can set up your passphrase account, um, tie it to a single word or to a phrase that you're familiar with, something that's easy for you to memorize, but that never has to be written down anywhere. Um, and so now you have these accounts that are only accessible by your mind. And so they're not written down, it's impossible to access them. And so you can have a situation where you have your passphrase accounts, you have two different pins to get into your Nano, you have your main accounts tied to your 24 word recovery phrase, maybe you keep a little bit of crypto in there to do some, some things, and then maybe you can have your passphrase accounts, which is also tied to a different pin that is not written down anywhere and only exists in your mind. And you can, um, so it gives you plausible deniability. So if someone were to try to forcibly take your crypto from you, you can it gives you a situation where you can like log into your, your regular accounts and, you know, show and show that you don't have the, the crypto. You can keep it hidden. It gives you another layer of obfuscation basically um, and higher security for sure. Yeah. I'd also like to add on that because the word can be whatever you want, um, a normal recovery. So recovery phrase is taken from the BIP 39 word list, which is a list of 2048 words that can be put into a recovery phrase. Um, I'm someone that I will always write down even my passphrase on a piece of paper in case I ever had like a brain injury and I forgot it <laughs> or nice, yeah. like someone in my family. I, I don't know, but I want that on my sheet um, or in my carved on my steel somehow. But what I really love about it, and that's totally personal preference, of course. what I really love about it, though, is that it doesn't have to be a word on that list. So no scanner is going to find it. Um, like there are scanners that will look for your recovery phrase in a photo or a text file because um, they're scanning for those 2048 words. And if they see one repeat, they're like, bingo. But if you have your passphrase, um, it's just you could technically write your passphrase down in a password manager if it wasn't associated to your recovery phrase. Right. Because there's no scanner looking for whatever random word comes out of your mind because it's not on the list. 
you know, that's actually a super interesting point. Like you could basically set up like a dummy password in your password manager app where it looks like it's maybe the password yeah. for something, but it's really your passphrase. Exactly. And there's no indication that that's what it is. Yeah, there, there's all manner of, of ways you could um, you can do that. Yeah, that's a, I never even thought about that. That's a good point. Yeah, and another thing about passphrases is uh, keep this in mind. If you do get into passphrases, they are case sensitive. So like uh, if you have a big long phrase or word and you have some capitals, make sure you know which ones are capitalized because um, even just the difference between a single letter that's not capitalized or, or, or wrong will uh, you know, create an entirely different set of passphrases. But that's also what's kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. Because your recovery phrase doesn't have capitals or right. no capitals. Yeah. So it still is that additional. You can also choose, I believe, like exclamation points. Yeah, or, special characters. Right. And yeah. that doesn't. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's not at all like a normal recovery phrase. Yeah. So. Yep. And here, let me drop it in the in case anyone wants to learn more, because uh, some of you here probably don't don't really know what we're talking about. You're like, what the <laughs> heck is a passphrase? Um, so the passphrase is commonly referred to as the 25th word. I'm actually going to drop this one right here. I'm going to drop the um, um, our article that talks about passphrases, and I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the chat for you guys right here, in case you want to check it out and learn learn some more about it. All right. And let's go ahead and drop the article as well on how to how set to set up it up. Passphrase. Good idea. Yeah. Just because um, for the person that was inquiring about it, this will allow you to take your um, temporary one and set it up. Uh, into attach it to your pin. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, there we go. A couple passphrase articles for you guys to check out. All right. So I think Joseph has more. So okay. So Joseph, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to skip your your questions because these are good ones. We should have time. All right. Yeah. So you're getting the sorry try again error message on your Stellar account. Um, so there, there's a couple met, um, error messages that start with that. Um, that sounds, if it says, sorry, try again, it sounds like a USB connection error, most likely. Um, it could potentially be another one. I'd have to really kind of see the, the error message. So yeah, honestly, like I think reaching out to us on the support ticket, if you, if you want some more, uh, you have some more questions, that way we can get screenshots from you and we can uh, really like deep dive what, what, what the issues that you're running into and, and help you overcome those. Um, yeah, I know S Plus is only Android compatible with OTG cable, but once I set up uh, Nano S Plus, if I just want to import the apps on Nano S Plus on my iPhone uh, so I can see accounts, is it possible? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll get you that. I'll get you that article to show you how to do that too. Export account? Yeah. Thanks. Beautiful. Yeah, and I skimmed through this in the settings where I showed um, how you can export your accounts as well. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so even though if you have a Nano S Plus, even if you wouldn't be able to access your account with your, with your Nano S Plus on your iPhone, you can still import them from desktop yep. and, and, and view them that way on mobile. All right, cool. How do you drain the battery completely? Great question. Yeah. When you are in your device under the settings, you can choose... Switch to, okay. Oh yeah, let me switch over here so y'all can see what I'm doing. Here, let me unlock my device real quick. In the settings, you can change to make it um, where it doesn't turn off, and that'll drain it pretty quick. So I'm going to hold it down to get to the control center. What's it under? Battery saver. Never power off. That is how you do it. So settings, general, battery saver. And choose never power off and it will die quickly. <laughs> <laughs> will die quickly. <laughs> you can also change it if you don't want it to turn off after like five seconds to ten minutes, whatever. Um that's totally optional, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Mr. Dino, you're saying, um, I really find the verify my seed phrase on Ledger Live helpful. It was really helpful to verify my seed phrase with the bill bottle. Um, I'm not too sure what you're referring to on that because you should never actually have to verify your seed phrase in Ledger Live. Ledger Live should never have access to your seed phrase. Um, 
if you're talking about maybe the recovery check app where you're verifying your seed phrase on your actual nano device with the recovery check app yeah that is that is a really really it's cool a great tool. feature i do yeah. it yeah yeah however if uh if ledger live is asking for your recovery phrase um don't do that um and reach out to us and let us know um ledger live isn't capable of asking you for your recovery yeah. phrase. so if for some reason ledger live itself is prompting you to enter the words into it that's a scam yes. um the recovery check app is great that's an app on your physical device where you can confirm it in your device never putting it into the computer oh yeah um I uh, gondola yeah gondola i i'm sorry i'm just gonna stop um okay <laughs> Uh, hi, I have an issue with the connection of my old Nano S, not used for two years. Um, check the USB and also change the cable, but no change. Basically, the display is not lighting up at all. Okay, yeah, so um, so you said you haven't used it for two years. It could be that may maybe wherever it was being stored, some moisture got in there, if it was a humid climate. Um, there's a lot, I mean, they're, they're electronic devices, and they're fickle, and they are um, subject to the same the same wear and tear that any other device may have um so uh, i can't speak to what your personal situation is however um i can say that if your nano s is dead you should reach out to us because we can get your promo code to upgrade to the nano s plus um, and if it is under warranty we can also replace it for you um so if it's like just under the two year the two year mark uh since you bought it then we can replace it otherwise we can get your discount code um yeah uh support.ledger.com open up a ticket Okay, Hokey Scott, we got a support case. All right. Uh, oh, Aya Gondola. Um, yeah, we uh, we are a small team, um, and we do our best to keep up with the tickets. Uh, they do sometimes fall several days behind, um, and then we go through these grind sessions to catch up. Um, but just like these other people that I asked, if you have your support case number, drop it here, and uh, and we'll we'll get it assigned to an agent right as soon right after this live stream. Absolutely. So I can see another question here. XRP is on Ledger, right? So the Ledger device is able to securely store and manage your XRP. Uh, Ledger Live is able, supports the viewing of XRP. Um, keep in mind that no funds actually live in the Ledger device or in Ledger Live, they live on the blockchain. But uh, the accounts that you're adding, which are derived from the recovery phrase and private keys set up on your device that the Ledger is securing, uh, absolutely. Those accounts, there are XRP accounts that you can see in Ledger Live um, and have secured by your Ledger device. Uh, what's the fastest way to make sure your ledger is not connected to anything that's a that's a good question and it's a luckily an easy answer Just break the connection um it uh so basically if you have it connect it it can only connect um via bluetooth to uh, mobile devices so if you have a mobile device, you can just turn off your Bluetooth uh, on your phone and it will break all Bluetooth connections that will break, including your Nano. If you have it plugged in via cable to your computer, you can just unplug it. Um, it's not, I know they look like USB uh, drives, um, but they're much, much different than a, a USB drive um, internally. And so you don't have to like safely remove the hardware or do anything like that. You can just break the connection mid-transaction you can just break the connection it'll have no impact on your device it won't brick it it won't break it um it won't mess with the transaction it'll just cancel the transaction that was being sent to your nano um so yeah so break the connection um mustafa is asking mustafa lamb uh when is ledger stacks coming uh merci uh yeah, so we're we're shooting for summer is uh, the last communication that we have out on that, and as far as I know, that's still the the latest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, but for updates on that, um, follow us on Twitter because our, our honestly, absolutely. Yeah, our our, our Twitter uh, team is crazy good. They they send out like notifications constantly. I wake up every morning honestly, and I check my my phone, and for like all the ledger 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 and ledger sport tweets get updates on what's happening in the company <laughs> absolutely and uh my tie node and we will link it right now yeah the ledger official ledger support uh, twitter page because there are 
so many scams. Oh God, so um, many scams. Trying to pretend to be ledger support. Uh, the biggest like red flags if they ask for your recovery phrase because obviously yes. we never will um but we're gonna go ahead and link the official ledger twitter here the ledger support twitter up above okay. yep oh, i just clicked that yep and then just that page oh cool perfect all right there you go look at that Thank i you. stole it from your link oh did you <laughs> <laughs> okay support twitter beautiful yeah all right, yeah, follow that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Captain. Ah, oh, Loki, thank you. We really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, we're we love doing these. These are honestly this is the funnest part of my week is doing these live streams with you guys. To be able to just to like like not technically in person, but very directly answer questions, help you guys out, show you guys how to do. Awesome. Yeah, Joseph, no problem. Same, same to you and Rome 90. Awesome. Okay, Scott, you're saying I was talking to now to live chat. And they said the button issue will go away when battery is charged. I hear a rattle on the device, but chat only says charge it and issues will go away. Uh, I'm not going to contradict anything you're being told. I, I don't know the specifics of that case. However, I will say that um, based on this, it doesn't possibly sound like advice I personally would give. Um, your battery charging will not have anything to do with like anything physical, like your button on your device. Um, However, I want to show you something real quick um, on the Nano. So like, um, if you look at the Nano, you'll see that th there's a swivel on it like this, and then you can actually take the swivel off like that, just by like kind of like bending it up. And you can see this one was really tight because we actually like went and like bent this down, the metal to like make it nice and tight. Um, but without the swivel on it, you'll see that the button is, is actually a little loose. It feels a little loose. Um, and if you're talking about the, the silver button specifically, and the reason that is, is because there's actually a gap uh, where the swivel fits on. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there's uh, like, like some metal right there, that indent that actually goes around the button and fits into the slot and makes a secure, you know, a nice, you know, nice tight fit. However, if your swivel itself is loose, bend it out a little bit, not very tight, the button might rattle a bit. The button might rattle a bit. You can see it's like not on there very good and the button's rattling and it's just kind of like kind of maybe a little janky or whatever. So like honestly, like like we will honor any warranty if, if you're not happy with your device, but really the, the quickest, easiest fix is to pop that swivel off, bend it down, make it nice and tight, and then pop it back onto your device. I've done that with most of my swivels. All of them. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Just make it a little bit tighter. Yeah. Um, Habibi Habeb, um, you're asking, can we ask questions about coins? For sure. Please do. Yeah, please do. We love questions about coins. Uh, Chris Bell, ooh, you, you're asking, has anyone answered my question? I don't know. Um, let me scroll up real quick and see if I can find you. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. So you're saying that your XRP was sent from your ledger without you knowing, and when you check the transaction, it pulls a bit hump. Um, you're sure it's a scammer. How can I get it back? Yeah, so um, if you shared your 24 recovery phrase with a scammer and they uh, initiated a transaction from your account with, without your permission, um, the only possible way, the only recourse is to contact the police. Um, you can reach out to us and we'll give you all the advice we can. Um, it sounds like you, you're saying that you're sure it's a scammer. So it sounds like maybe something happened and you're already aware of kind of like maybe how it happened. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, I don't want to get into too much of your personal details here on this live stream in front of everybody for something like this, this would be definitely a one-on-one -on -one thing. Um, that way we can kind of like really figure out what happened. Um, and I'm really sorry to hear about this. That, that stinks to hear about that as part of my job. 
But yeah, reach out to us and we will help you as best we can. However, as far as the recovery of your assets goes, um, you will need to uh, work with the police on that. Sure. I think, I can't remember. My memory is not what it used to be, I guess. But Hokey, did you give us your support um, case number? I've got two here that I'm going to be following up. Let's see. Let me just make sure. I lost it. Um, I do have two support uh, case numbers here that I'm going to be following up with and getting assigned to agents. But uh, yeah, but uh, if, if if you haven't shared it already, drop it in the chat, and uh, and we'll we'll get you taken care of. Okay, Neo, you're asking uh, when CAA and Chia exchange. So Chia exchange that would be if if that ever did get incorporated into Ledger Live, it would most likely be a DAP in the uh, Discover tab. Um, similar to kind of how we've had other exchange, uh, exchanges like like Binance. Um, you know, you can buy and sell through Binance for, from Ledger Live in the Discover tab. It would have to be something like that. And uh, we would really have to work with that exchange on it. And I don't know of anything in the works on that. Um, so that would just kind of have to be like, uh, like wait and kind of see what happens. I don't know if we have any partnerships with them or not. Um, however, you are asking when CAA. I'm not really too familiar with that. Let me look that up real quick. We are getting low on time, so we are going to be terminating here in just a couple minutes. I don't see CAA, so I'm not too sure what that is. Um, so yeah, so really just uh, reach out to us um, at our support page and uh, give us all the information of what you're, what you're trying to ask about, and we'll be happy to look that up. Problem. Brittany Taylor, one more question each. We can do one more question. All right, go ahead. I will let you go ahead and just. All right. If you have, okay, uh, right here, I'm new to crypto and I just got my Ledger X. Do I need a computer to set up and use Ledger? I only, I don't have a computer, I only have a phone. So you have the Ledger X, Handle X, so that can connect via Bluetooth. So you can set it up on either the iPhone or the Android device um, because you can connect via Bluetooth. So you are good to go there. Yep. All right. Um, I want to use my question to, um, um answer uh so chris bell you're saying you didn't share your recovery phrase and can i use my recovery phrase to get it back i honestly don't know how it happened so your recovery phrase is what's stored in your nano and that's what your accounts are derived from and so um you cannot use that recovery phrase to take assets from another account that your recovery phrase can only be used um, to access the accounts tied to that recovery phrase so basically if your assets were sent out of your account only way to get those assets back would be to learn the identity of the person who uh, controls those assets, as in like the the wallet address that they're currently in, and then compel that person to back to you. Which is why we always offer, or we always uh, the best advice we can give is to work with the police because there's like we we have no legal authority to really about it, and it's like it's a horrible situation because you know our hands are tied. It's like we we really do want to help, but like there's nothing we can do. Like the, the, these assets exist on the blockchain and you, know, you hear the expression, not your keys, not your crypto. So if someone did find a way to uh, get their hands on your private key and they initiate a transaction, then only that person can control that crypto. And so the, the best case scenario in these cases is when that person decides to move that crypto to a centralized exchange to uh, try to offload it, try to sell it. And so with centralized exchanges, they all require identity, identity verification. And so you can't move crypto to a centralized exchange and sell it anonymously. They need to know your details. So at that point, that's where the police could contact the exchange you know, in some cases and work with them to release the identity of that person. And of course, it can get really complicated. And I'm no, I'm no expert on how the police handle these matters. Um, so it's always a case by case basis. 
Uh, some people have good luck depending on where you live and, and, um, and others don't. Um, but uh, again, reach out to us and we'll give you all the advice we can and we'll, we'll do everything we can to help determine how this happened. Um, Cause that's honestly, I mean, recovering your assets would be the most important part, but understanding um, how an event like this could happen could protect you sure from it happening again. All right, so I think this about wraps up our time. I'm going to go ahead and link Ledger Academy for y'all because I think it is such a great interface. And it really helps to break down some of those more complex uh, topics in crypto and not just explain like what's happening, but why it's happening to kind of arm you with tools to understand what's going on in the space and how to how to stay safe there. Mm. All right, so there's a link to the academy. All right, cool. Um, well, I hope that we helped you guys uh, in some way. I hope that uh, Taylor, uh, is there a huge round of applause for Taylor? Or round of applause for Taylor. Very first onboarding, <laughs> and she of course crushed it. We knew she would. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, thanks for coming out. Um, our next live stream for the US team is going to be uh, this coming Wednesday. Uh, so next week at a 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our EU team does a bunch of live streams as well. And honestly, their live streams are excellent. If you haven't popped into the EU's live streams, you should definitely check those out as well. Um, that team is just fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. That wraps it up. Thank all right. you all so much. Bye, everybody. Bye.